everybody, welcome back to Taji's World of Books and welcome to another book series recommendation video. Hey you guys, welcome back. So today I am going to be talking about a new author. She's new to me and I think she's also a fairly new independent mafia romance author as well and that is Maggie Cole. I'm going to be talking about her Mafia Wars series. There are 10 books in the series and as a result, since there are 10 books, and I'm going to be talking about all 10 because I read them all and they were amazing. They were so, so good. What I'm going to do is just give you a brief synopsis of each book and of course because because it like all culminates at the end into like the story is completely wrapped up. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys if you haven't read it. So with that, I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis. So let's start off by talking about the Mafia Wars, really the first four books or five books, and I'll let you know when that, you know, when that mark comes. The first four books are about the Ivanov family. Then the last books are about the O'Malley family. So you can see there's the Russian. So in this world, there is the Russian involvement, there's the Italians, there are the Irish, and it really is about these families sort of coming together and culminating in this really decade long, you know, war that is going on amongst these families. But the children of these you know that like the fathers the heads they have overlapped and some are friends and some are intermarrying and so there's an ongoing plot and an ongoing storyline that threads through each of the books um, but each book ends in an HEA or a happy for now type story as well as the fact that I think Maggie did a really great job like when you start off with the first book which is Ruthless Stranger and you think there are these like secondary characters that are not really important pay attention to those characters because by the time you get to book 10 those secondary characters are really relevant and make you know sort of like all get wrapped up so when we talk about a tapestry or weaving a really great story she had to know when she sat down and wrote this where she wanted this story to go and what she wanted this outcome to be and she worked you there through each of the books and so things that you think are irrelevant and don't make sense later on in the 10th book you're like ah now I totally get it so without further ado, let's get into it. The first book in the series is Ruthless Stranger, and I have my notes here, so I'm gonna be looking down. This is Ruthless Stranger. This is about Maxime, who is an Ivanov, and Aspen. And Maxime meets Aspen in Las Vegas. They both have had previous relationships, and those previous relationships, Aspen was married for 20 years, and her husband or ex-husband she's going through a divorce and they take her to Vegas as a like you know a coming out like you've gotten rid of him and now you need to sow your wild oats because you've never done that because you settled down with him very early on in life like she got married at like 20 or something and he was like you know a trust fund baby and just an all-around jerk like just a terrible guy Maxime has never been married but he's with, been with the same woman for a very long time and she basically jerks him along and strings him along and she's just not a good person and he really is kind of sick of her aunt and sick of her games and so they he goes to Vegas because it is his brother's bachelor party or whatever and so they go there to celebrate Maxime is there he hears you know Aspen's girlfriend saying like you need to just have a one-night stand if you did have a one-night stand what would that look like and she's like I would be blindfolded there would be rules like and you know like we wouldn't violate those rules I wouldn't know him etc etc and Maxime is like I'm gonna fulfill every one of your desires whims and dreams and that's where the story starts from there it is a really good introduction into this world you meet Maxim and his, his brothers you meet you know the O'Malley clan because they are the Ivanovs are very good friends with the O'Malley's you also see the Ivanovs rival which is the Petrov family and so like it's a very it's a very good introduction into this Chicago world and how things sort of evolve um, and it's a really great story I gave this one a four out of five star the next book in the series is Broken Fighter and this is Boris and Nora and the trope in this is a my brother's my brother's best friend so Boris is best friends with it's like a forbidden romance type situation and there is an overlap between the it's a forbidden romance in that it's an Irish and a Russian love 
And in the O'Malley clan, the O'Malleys are like, we need to preserve the bloodline. You can only marry another Irishman. And Nora is Irish. And she, her brother is best friends with Boris. And Boris is an Ivanov. He's brother to Maxime. And so he, they have to hide their relationship and how that sort of works itself out and what happens as a result. And again, you're meeting all the cast of characters. You're seeing everybody from Ruthless Stranger. And throughout all of the books, you get to know everybody so well because you see repeatedly all of these characters throughout all of the books. And I love when a writer does that because you really get to immerse yourself so much in this world. So like I said, this is my brother's best friend. It's a forbidden romance. It's really steamy. It's really spicy. I gave this four stars. It's a great, it, it really works itself out. There's a surprise situation that happens and you're just there every minute of it. Yep. The next book in the series is Cruel Enforcer. And this is Cora and Sergei's story. And Cora and Sergey, we've met Cora because Cora is friends with Aspen, so we meet her in Ruthless Strangers. And these are two really dominant personalities. Sergey is the brother of Maxime. There is a BDSM element here where it's used to kind of heal and to push boundaries because Cora has some stuff that's going on and she is very dominant in her personality and she's become that way because she had to be. And so Sergey really like you know, helps her and handles her and helps her to get to where she needs to be even though she fights against him. This is an interracial relationship. There is also some conversation about family and how family can either help you or family can break you. There's a lot of insecurities that need to be worked out in this situation as well. This is also um, an older woman and a younger man. So that is a unique trope that we don't often see. I really enjoyed this story. I really enjoyed these two characters together. They're steamy, spicy, sexy for sure. I gave this a four out of five star, really good. And now this is when the, ser it, the series really just takes off. Like it just gets so good. And every book after this is progressively better and better and better and better. Oh my gosh. So this is Vic Vicious Protector. And this is Adrian and Skylar's story. And this is a five out of five star for sure. There is a lot of PTSD and trauma that's talked about in this book. There's a death of a sister. Um, this is Obrecht's brother. And so you'll learn more about who Obrecht is and what the situation is. Skylar is very jealous. She's very insecure because of her past. And so they ha constantly have to deal with these insecurities and him constantly having to bring her down and put her at ease. Adrian is the bodyguard in this situation. And so we meet him early on with Maxime because he is the uh, bodyguard to Aspen. But you like, get to know him very, very well. Um, and Skylar is she's so insecure, it's almost to the point at, at times in the book that it gets a little bit annoying because she just can't get herself together. You know, and she constantly is like, why won't you tell me? Why does everybody else know everything? And why, why am I the, the one that doesn't know? And Adrian does hide a lot of things for her, but he does it because he's like, this is for your protection. And the more that I tell you, the more that this makes you a susceptible to being abducted. You know, we live in a crime, we're, we're a crime family. We live in a crime world. We're doing bad things and you don't want to know about those things. But she is obsessive, just like Adrian is obsessive about keeping her safe. She's obsessive about knowing the, the secrets and knowing what's going on and what's happening, you know, and Adrian is the way that he is because, you know, of the, PT, the PTSD that he has and the trauma that he has. And so them coming to terms with their story, figuring out their limits and boundaries is just absolutely amazing. And when they actually get there, it's so beautiful, but the road there is like angsty and tumultuous and difficult and challenging and just not easy. And so you have to, they have to work towards it and they really work for their HEA. And so it's a five out of five star. So then finally we get Ulbricht's story and this is, Ulbricht is part of the Ivanov family and we hear, we've been hearing about Ulbricht throughout all the books. We've been hearing about his significant interest, Selena, throughout all of the books. And this book is so good. When you talk about using BDSM as healing, this is absolutely about using BDSM as healing. Selena has gotten out of a abusive master-slave relationship where her ex-husband was a very powerful and influential bad guy, bad, bad guy. And he put her in a non-consensual slave situation. 
And when Obrek sees her, he recognizes this very, very quickly. And she, even though she has gotten out of that situation, she still has the urges to be in a BDSM relationship. So Obrek is like, I'm gonna take you in hand and teach you. And he finds her in a dangerous situation and that she could really potentially get hurt. And he's like, okay, this is how we're gonna learn what your limits and boundaries are. And they do that together. And it really is a beautiful, there's like a revenge plot that's going for past wrongs. There's a, it's a beautiful story. Selena is so submissive and so scared and so traumatized. And Obrick knows that he has to tread lightly and carefully. And it also talks about bringing in a therapist that specializes in the BDSM community to kind of help Selena through these challenges and difficulties. And then also learning to live on your own, learning how to develop a friend group, learning to be a friend, learning to be a partner, discovering the self, stepping away from maybe the party that you want to be with so that you can sort out your own thoughts and figure out your own path forward. It's such a great book about healing and discovery of the self that it's so beautiful. This is the, one of the best books. I feel like it's my favorite book in the series and that's Obrick and Selena's story. So now we're going into the O'Malley clan and you can tell because the, the, the little logo, the family crest, if you will, has changed. So that was the end of the Ivanovs. So the first five books are about the Ivanovs and then the last, you know, five books are about about the O'Malley clan. And so this is Unchosen Ruler and we've been hearing about Liam for quite some time. Liam is, been, is friends with the Ivanovs. They're connect, interconnected families. And this is his story with Haley. Haley is part of the friend group of Aspen and Cora and all of those girls. So they're all connected. And we've been, we've been waiting for this book because there have been several sort of Easter eggs over there about what's been going on with Liam and Haley. Liam was in prison for quite a long time. He has just recently gotten out of prison and now he is thrust into the role of being the leader of his family. And is he really ready for that? Um, and so then we bring in, there are two hated families. The Baileys are an absolute rival, just like the Petrovs are a rival to the Ivanovs. The Baileys are a rival to the O'Malley clan. And so we are really seeing what's happening with that backstory and how the Ivanovs have the O'Malley's back, and then also seeing the development of Haley's story and Haley's background and how she plays into this bigger picture and bigger, bigger story. And so it is really, really good. It's fast paced. Haley has a crazy sister named Gemma, and Gemma is a whole lot and a whole lot of handful. And so she's causing some drama in this book between Liam and Haley. And so that's all gotta get worked out. And it's really, really good. And this is a five out of five star too. So I mentioned Gemma and her crazy self. So this is Perfect Sinner. This is again the O'Malley family. And this is Nolan and Gemma's story. And Nolan is the brother to Liam. And so he is part of that whole clan and something happens in Unchosen Ruler that makes it so that Nolan has to take over babysitting and watching Gemma. And so this is an enemies to lovers forced proximity situation. There's some trigger warnings for suicidal thoughts and what one does when you are so feeling hopeless and depressed and don't know how to overcome all of the situations that you find yourself in. This is, there's a lot of jealousy in this book. There is a lot of her actions and her behaviors get her into trouble. She's so hot headed and she does so many things that she like is like cocksure. Like she just goes in guns blazing. She doesn't necessarily think through what she's doing and then she's got to like either make amends, she's got to figure out a way to get out of it, or she puts herself in harm's way because she is just so like hot headed and it's so independent and I'm going to do what I want to do. But her life and livelihood has been taken away from her because of this old rivalry that's coming into play, that's trying to manipulate her, that's trying to control her and trying to use her as a weapon against the O'Malley's and whether or not Gemma is going to allow herself to be used in that way. This is a really great story. It's a five out of five star. Then the next is Brutal Defender, and this is Killian's story with Ariana. And as a result of some things that have happened, this is a forced arranged marriage, and it's an alliance between the New York Italian Mafia and the Irish Chicago Mafia. And this, in the beginning, this is an enemies to lovers situation for sure. It is just 
wrought with banter and antics and you know lots of angst and lots of fighting and lots of rebelling against the system but at the same time trying to figure each other out trying to understand each other trying to figure out how to make it work when you're being put into this situation and whether they are going to be able to learn to trust one another and make it work for the sake of themselves as well as their families and how does that become a thing like what what happens as a result of that so good five out of five star the next book in the series is deviant hacker and this is Declan's story with Simona so it's Declan and Simona and this is a captor captive situation and he abducts her because he believes that this has been their arch enemy that has sought to destroy their family and done a number of things to prevent them and cause them to lose billions and billions of dollars and so this is using BDSM and all kinds of torture techniques to get her to confess to the crimes that she has committed. And this story is steamy and spicy and I absolutely love Daddy Declan. This is some daddy kink. I love it, it's so good. This is one of the best books in the series, so, so good. And then the last book in the series is Relentless Hunt Hunter. And this is where every book then wraps up and you get the entire story told again, but from Finn's perspective. And you've been hearing about Finn and Brina for quite some time, and Finn is the older generation. And so he was the older of the crew before all of these other characters. They were all younger than him, but Finn got sent to prison, and Finn was in prison for the better part of 15 years. And you get to understand how that happened, why it happened and what happens as a result and all those old enemies and rivals all sort of culminate together in one total package and one total picture. And so we've got some time jumps. It starts 21 years earlier and you're working your way through systematically to present day and what happens as a result and then going forward as well where they are, you know, 5, 10, 15 years out, all of the characters. It's wrapping up, it's conclusions, it's understanding accidents and mistakes and everything that should have come and it is this is uh, th these two Finn and Brina are not together for most of the book but they're not together because of stupid stupidity and poor plot choices they're not together because they are being forced apart because it's almost like the universe is working against them and there's so much love there and so much longing and so much fortitude and not giving up that it's like they, if any other couple deserves their HEA, this couple does because nothing that they did caused them to beat apart other than the circumstances of their birth and the circumstances of their situation. And this book is so good and it's so heartfelt and it really gets you to that like long haul that you were hoping for of, of a conclusion and a wrap up to the entire story. And not only do you get their conclusion, but you get to see every other character from where they were 21 years ago to where they are 10 years from now, 10 years from when the story ends, like so like going forward to see how they've evolved, how they've developed as couples, as individuals, as family members, as businesses, like everything really comes together. It's great, wonderful, amazing how she did that. So you guys, that is Maggie Cole's The Mafia War. It is really, like she really crafted a great tale. Like you can tell that she knew where she wanted, or at least it seemed that she knew where she wanted the story to go to. And each book gave you a little bit more of that piece of the puzzle to get you closer and closer there. You just needed to pick them up and put them all together. And she's like, and just in case you weren't able to do that, I'm gonna help you do it in Relentless Hunter, but we're gonna do it from Brina's story. Now, I went ahead and took a look because she is in the process and I'm super excited. I want more of this world. So let me say this. She is in the process of writing the Mafia Wars New York series as well. And that is going to be a spin-off series from this book and there is a character, the first book in that series is called Toxic and there's a character that's here we get him in Brutal Defender, 
where we learn about Ariana and the New York Syndicate. So we definitely learn about him there. And as the books go on, and we definitely see in Deviant Hacker and in Relentless Hunter that Dante is a significant character along with Bridget. And in Ruthless Hunter, we learn more about Bridget's story. And so in Toxic, which is gonna be the Mafia Wars in New York, which is the spinoff of the series, we're getting Dante's story in book one. So my understanding is that there are going to be four books in the Mafia Wars New York. There's going to be Toxic, Immortal, Corrupt, and Lethal. And these are all characters that we've been introduced to already. So Toxic is going to be Dante's story. Immortal is going to be Gianni's story. Corrupt is Massimo. And Lethal is Tristiano's story. These are all the brothers, I believe, of Ariana. So I'm really excited to see where she goes with that and what that's going to look like. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting and really good. And I don't know when, let me see, I thought she had put out, she has a little bit, she gives you, if you're interested in seeing a little bit, she has like the first chapter or the, uh, you know, the prequel and the first chapter that starts 24 years ago of Toxic. So you get a little bit of that, like to whet your appetite, but it definitely is coming. And I cannot wait to see what she does with that and where that story goes. It's going to be super exciting and super fun. And if it's any, if any indication of this, we're going to see all the other characters. We're going to see where they're going with their lives. We're going to go back and tell more of the story. She's going to fill it in more for us. So it's going to be really good. So you guys, that is all that I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And you know, hit that bell notification button so you can be notified every time I upload a new video, which is generally Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And hit the like button because that helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And that's all that I have for today. And I will be back soon with more videos. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.